Good afternoon. My name is Elin Grayson, and I'm the president of the Chicago Bar Association. I want to welcome you to the Chicago Bar Association's 2021 Justice John Paul Stevens Awards Ceremony. Established in 2000, this award is named for the Chicago native Justice John Paul Stevens, who retired from the U.S. Supreme Court in 2010. The Stevens Award is presented annually to lawyers and judges in recognition of their outstanding character and commitment to the community. Selected by the Chicago Bar Association and the Chicago Bar Foundation, these honorees exemplify the highest personal integrity and devotion to public service, just as Justice Stevens did. We are delighted that you have joined us today to celebrate Karina, Ayala, Bermijo, Anne, Fred, Judge Rebecca Palmeyer, Judge James Snyder, and Lawrence Sufferton. Like past Stevens Award recipients, this year's honorees are among the finest in Chicago's legal profession. We are pleased to honor them for their continued service to the Bar Association and our community. Now, before we hear from our Stevens Award recipients, join me in welcoming Cynthia Photos Abbott, Chicago Bar Foundation President. Good afternoon, my name is Cindy Abbott and I am the president of the Chicago Bar Foundation. I would like to join my friend and CBA counterpart, Lynn Grayson, in welcoming you to today's event to celebrate outstanding honorees and Justice Stevens' long and distinguished career and the legacy he left to our profession, our justice system, and our country. As with so many other things in our world today, we're sorry we could not gather in person to honor this distinguished group of lawyers and judges. That takes nothing away from their achievements and you'll have an opportunity to hear from them soon. As many of you know, the Stevens Award was conceived by Justice Stevens' former law clerks, the CBA and the CBF as a tribute to the justice to honor those lawyers who best exemplify his commitment to integrity and public service in the practice of law. First presented in 2000, those who have received this award are really in the Hall of Fame of Chicago's legal community. And as you'll see today, this year's honorees are very worthy additions to this esteemed group. As a CBA's charitable arm, the CBF is committed to carrying on Justice Stevens' commitment to the noblest traditions of our profession by working to ensure that our justice system is fair, accessible, and equitable for all. Justice Stevens has left us with great legacy that will continue to inspire us for years to come. His legacy of pro bono and public service in his career, both as a practicing lawyer and as a judge, will continue to serve as great inspiration to all of us in the legal community, to step up our leadership in the fight to fulfill one of our nation's most fundamental principles of equal access to justice. I know that most of you watching today are already strong supporters of the work of the CBF, so thank you. For those of you who have not gotten involved yet, I hope you will join me and your many other esteemed colleagues in taking a leadership role in this cause that is so fundamental to our profession. You can learn more about getting involved and contribute online at chicagobarfoundation.org. Thanks again for all you do to make the CBF's work possible. I look forward to working with you in the coming year as CBF president, and congratulations again to all of today's honorees. I hope you enjoy the program. Thank you, President Abbott, for your important remarks. Now I'd like to introduce our 2021 John Paul Stevens Award recipients. Karina Ayala Bermijo began her career as a hearing officer for the Chicago Board of Education in advancing to the highest HR executive position for the city of Chicago, where she worked for three years. Karina spent seven years as the Director of Community Services for the Chicago Bar Association, where she encouraged attorneys to take on pro bono work and collaborated with the bar in various divisions of the Circuit Court of Cook County on initiatives to improve the justice system. Previously, Karina served as General Counsel and Executive Vice President of the Metropolitan Family Services, one of the oldest nonprofits in Illinois. 
As GC, she was responsible for all legal matters for MFS. She also served as the executive director of the Legal Aid Society for Metropolitan Family Services and previously served as the vice president for human resources for MFS. Karina is the current president and CEO of Institute de Progreso Latino, an immigrant child. As an immigrant child, Karina holds the Institute's mission close to her heart. She believes in contributing to the fullest development of Latino immigrants and their families through education, training, and employment that fo fosters full participation in the changing US society while preserving cultural identity and dignity. It is my honor and I am very pleased to present Karina Aella Permijo. It is an extreme honor to receive the Justice John Paul Stevens Award, especially alongside my fellow awardees who all exemplify commitment to integrity and public service in the practice of law. I recall meeting Justice Stevens on many occasions as a young lawyer, as a law student, and he was always so kind. I remember his love for the CBA, and I also recall his lifetime commitment to improve the system of justice. I also recall the inspirational stories of the award recipients whose lives and impact fueled my passion to make a difference. As an immigrant, I was always drawn to these larger than life success stories, and I used them as a roadmap. Thank you to the Chicago Bar Foundation and to the Chicago Bar Association and its dedicated leaders, Bob Glaves, Terry Murphy, Beth McMean. Thank you for providing me my beginning anchored in pro bono community service and access to justice. Thank you to CBA President Lynn Grayson and former CBA presidents like Justice Hyman, Justice Cunningham, Kevin Durkin, the Honorable Kenneth Wright, Dan Cotter, Aurora Abella Astriaco, to name a few. Thank you. You've taught me so much about servant leadership and kindness. And to my husband, Frankie Bermejo, of over 25 years and my three remarkable children, thank you for allowing me to serve. I accept this award on behalf of the 8,000 individuals that we serve at Instituto de Progreso Latino. You help me help them reach their fullest potential. And I invite you to learn more about Instituto and come with me, feed the community, share your stories in the hopes that your stories will inspire them the way they inspired me. And as I collectively thank you, together we know that we could join hands and attack this issue of justice for all, because we know that if we want peace, we must seek justice. Thank you. Ann Fred is a senior attorney at Neil and Foley LLC, the nation's oldest continuously operating African-American owned law firm. She has an extensive background in various areas of municipal law, including governance, legislative analysis and drafting, intergovernmental agreements, procurement, ethics, Open Meetings Act, Freedom of Information Act, real estate, development and implementation of regulations and policies to promote business opportunities for minorities and women, equal employment opportunities for minority and female journey workers, apprentices and laborers, and Chicago residents. Anne is the current president of the Cook County Bar Association Foundation. She is the former, she is a former member of the Board of Managers for the Chicago Bar Association, former president of the Cook County Bar Association, and former member of the Board of Directors of the National Bar Association. She is a member of the Women's Bar Association of Illinois, the National Association of Board Lawyers, and the National Association of Women Lawyers Division. She is part of the Circuit Court of Cook County Elder Law Task Force. Please join me in welcoming Ann Fred. Good afternoon to President Grayson, the Board of Managers and members of the Chicago Bar Association, my fellow honorees, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ann L. Fred. 
I am deeply pleased and humbled that the Chicago Bar Association has selected me to receive the 2021 Justice John Paul Stevens Award. Congratulations to my fellow awardees, Karina Ayala Romea, Honorable James Snyder, Judge Rebecca Paul Meyer, and Larry Suckerden. My fellow awardees and I are honored to join a distinguished list of past recipients who exemplify Justice Stevens' lifetime commitment to integrity and public service in the practice of law. The Stevens Award began in 2000. One of the first recipients was Honorable George N. Layton. Judge Layton was a distinguished jurist on the federal court for many years. After he retired from the bench while he was in his 70s, he returned to the practice of law with the firm of Earl L. Neal and Associates for an additional 25 years until he was 97 years old. In 2001, the Stevens Award was presented to Earl L. Neal. I have spent more than 40 years practicing law at the law firm that was founded by Earl L. Neal and his father, Earl J. Neal. Their legacy continues today through their son, Langdon D. Neal, as the firm celebrates more than 80 years of continuous existence and is the oldest minority-owned law firm in the country. We become who we are through the support and mentorship of others. I want to acknowledge Earl L. Neal for the contributions that he made to me as a person and as an attorney. I first met Earl Neal when I was a young lawyer with an uncertain future who wanted to have a legal career in public service. Mr. Neal was extraordinary not only for his legal knowledge and skills, but also his integrity and commitment to helping others. He was extremely generous with sharing his knowledge and his time. He was always available to listen and give advice and support others. I also want to acknowledge Justice Glenn T. Johnson, he provided me with the opportunity to serve as a law clerk for him on the Illinois Appellate Court when I graduated from law school. I was introduced to Justice Johnson by my law school classmate, retired Judge Sidney A. Jones III. Justice Johnson was a mentor, not only to me, but to a generation of judges and lawyers dedicated to public service, including Justice P. Scott Neville of the Illinois Supreme Court, Justice Joy V. Cunningham of the Illinois Appellate Court, and Judge Timothy C. Evans, Chief Judge of the Circuit Court of Cook County. Finally, I want to thank President Grayson and the Chicago Bar Association for honoring me with this award. I look forward to continuing the legacy and commitment of Justice Stevens to integrity and public service in the practice of law. Judge Rebecca R. Palmeyer was sworn in as the Chief Judge of the United States District Court for the Northern District of Illinois on July 1, 2019, the first woman to serve in that role in the court's 200 year history. She serves as the Seventh Circuit's District Judge Representative to the United States Judicial Conference and is a member of the Executive Committee of the conference. She has an Honorary Fellow of the College of Labor and Employment Lawyers and a Fellow of the American Bar Foundation. Judge Palmeyer served as an Administrative Law Judge with the Illinois Human Rights Commission the quasi-judicial agency responsible for enforcement of the state's anti-discrimination laws. 
She is the past president of the Lawyers Club of Chicago, past president of the Richard Lynn American Inns of Court, and an active member of the Chicago Bar Association, the Chicago chapter of the Federal Bar Association, the Women's Bar Association of Illinois, and the American Bar Association. She has served on the executive boards of the CBA, the Chicago chapter of the Federal Bar Association, and the Women's Bar Association of Illinois, and as secretary of the ABA Labor and Employment Law section. I am pleased to present Judge Rebecca R. Palmeyer. What an extraordinary honor and a joy it is to receive this award in the name of a man who is a hero to all of us. As many of you know, in his role as our circuit justice, Justice Stevens attended our Seventh Circuit Judicial Conference every year. At that conference and a luncheon with us judges, he would discuss cases from our circuit that had come before the high court in the last year. Justice Stevens exhibited a rare combination razor sharp intellect with warm humility. One writer has described him as impassioned yet direct, honest and unpretentious, high praise indeed. In his moments with us and in so many of his opinions, he was everything a judge should be and everything this award inspires me to try to be. I became the chief just judge of our court in July, 2019, the same month that Justice Stevens died. Our district was celebrating its 200th anniversary that year with a series of events over several months until COVID hit and life changed. Today, we are writing a new chapter in our court's history. As commercial activity ground to a halt here, we pushed on with court proceedings and are now conducting jury trials in our courthouse and doing our other court business in new ways. Justice Stevens' thinking famously evolved over the years he served our nation on the Supreme Court. We in the district court are determined to be as open and engaged as Justice Stevens was and to face a changed world with youthful energy and flexibility. I know that in honoring me with this award, you are recognizing the work our court has done in this challenging era. In a time of racial unrest, political polarization, increasing fears about the future of the globe, and of course, always the pandemic, we continue to do our work as well as we can. Today, I thank our clerk of court and all of my colleagues on the court who have been such terrific team players. And always, forever, I thank my husband, a star in his own right, who is not only a trophy, but also a pillar of unwavering support for me. I am awed and delighted to be recognized today with other lawyers whom I so admire. The English ballerina Margot Fontaine said, generally speaking, we are all happier when we are still striving for achievement than when the prize is in our hands. I'm not quite sure I agree with Fontaine because this award today makes me very happy, but she was surely right that there is great joy in the striving as well. Being a lawyer in this community and now for many years a judge has called for long hours, dedication, sacrifice, and some failures along the way. I am no Babe Ruth whom Justice Stevens witnessed 89 years ago calling his shot and then delivering the home run blast. But even when things don't go perfectly, the work, work in this legal community, surrounded by all of you, many other people of dedication and goodwill is greatly rewarding. Today, you honor me just for doing my best, just as all of you do at something I love, promoting justice in society. Thank you so very much. Honorable James E. Snyder is an associate judge of the Circuit Court of Cook County, Illinois. He was appointed to the bench in 2007 by the Illinois Supreme Court. Prior to his appointment to the bench, he served as a general counsel of the Human Rights Commission. He served as a founding member and general counsel of the Chicago area Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce and the AIDS Care Housing Initiative. He was a member of the Illinois Federation of Human Rights, now Equality Illinois, and chairperson of the Fair Illinois Ballot Initiative Defensive. Judge Snyder has written and lectured on fair employment and fair housing law and policy at law schools, including the John Marshall Law School, Kent College of Law, Northern Illinois University, the Chicago Bar Association, the Illinois State Bar Association, and the National Judicial Conference. He works as a mentor to law students and undergraduate students, including through the American Bar Association, Minority Business Law Scholarship in the NIU Erickson 
Doherty Scholarship. Judge Snyder is the chairperson of the new judge orientation programs for the Illinois Supreme Court and has served as a member of the Illinois Supreme Court Committee on Judicial Education, as well as the Committees on Judicial Performance Evaluation and Judicial Mentoring Programs. He currently is the chair of the Illinois Supreme Court Advanced Judicial Academy. He is the former president of the Alliance of the LGBTQ Judges, and he is the former president of the Illinois Judges Association. It is my pleasure to present Judge James Snyder. I'm so very grateful to the Chicago Bar Association and the Chicago Bar Foundation for this honor to be mentioned with the others that you honor today and with the name of Justice John Paul Stevens is more than I could ever have imagined. And I'll do everything I can to earn that in the days ahead. In 1969, attorney John Paul Stevens served as special counsel to the Illinois Supreme Court's Commission on Judicial Corruption, known as the Greenberg Commission, for its chairperson, CBA President Frank Greenberg. Stevens and that commission held proceedings in the building we now call the Daily Center and in the courtroom where I was later assigned to preside in 2009. I had the great honor to meet and spend time talking with Justice Stevens in that courtroom when he sat for a documentary interview there. I treasure the photos from that day and the stories he told me, and I remain inspired by his words. I'm grateful to the CBA, the CBF, and the hundreds of lawyers who serve the public through these organizations. For generations past, and especially now, you provide vital service to people in need. You fight discrimination and injustice, and you light the way of service for the next generation of lawyers. In the case of Bowers versus Hardwick, the United States Supreme Court upheld as constitutional a Georgia law which criminalized gay conduct and therefore gay identity. That decision is not the law at this time, and it may feel like another era, but it is not. That decision is within my time. It came out when I was in law school. In his dissent, Justice Stevens wrote that, although the meaning of the principle, all men are created equal, is not always clear, it surely must mean that every free citizen has the same interest in liberty that the members of the majority share. To write and speak for liberty and against injustice and discrimination was his gift to us. Without judges like him and organizations like this and lawyers like you, People like me and lives like mine would not be possible. Thank you for all you have done and for all the ways you'll meet these challenges in the future. Thank you for bringing us together virtually. I am sure we'll all be together again soon, and thank you. Larry Sufferton is of counsel to the law firm of Taft, Tennyson, and Hollister. And since 2002, was elected to the Cook County Board and the Cook County Forest Preserve District Board to represent the Northeast side of Cook County, including parts of the city of Chicago and the North Shore suburbs. He served in the United States Air Force before joining the Cook County Public Defender's Office. Since 1981, he has been the Legislative Counsel to the Chicago Bar Association. In this role, he has helped advocate the CBA's positions on hundreds of bills that have affected civil practice criminal practice, judicial funding, condominium law, adoption law, pension law, domestic relations, probate law, tax law, and many other areas of law that our members practice. As a county commissioner, he is focused on stabilizing the Cook County health and hospital system by authoring the governance ordinance the system has operated under since 2009. In addition, he was able to save the now restored old Cook County Hospital building from demolition. Larry has been an advocate for the court system, the state's attorney's office, and the sheriff's office. He has authored ordinances dealing with the creation of the inspector general's office, stricter ethical standards, codification of ordinances, and the creation of a countywide program to collect and destroy unused pharmaceuticals, including opiates. I am pleased to present Larry Sufferton. 
This is a wonderful award to receive. I'm very happy and humbled to be given it. I only met Justice John Paul Stevens once, over 20 years ago at Reagan Washington Airport, as we both were waiting for a plane to return to Chicago. He was a friendly person who was interested in what brought me to DC. He was happy to hear that I was the legislative counsel of the CBA, and he told me how he was about to be the president of the CBA, but instead he got appointed to the Seventh Circuit. Like Justice Stevens, I've tried through my private practice and public service on the Cook County Board to educate the community on actions that will improve lives. I'm grateful to share this award with a distinguished group of lawyers and judges who have worked diligently to improve the lives of our community. Congratulations to each of you. The practice of law gives us all unique opportunities to solve problems. You never know who will bring the next issue through the office door, but a lawyer can't be ready to tackle these issues unless he has a strong family behind him. I wanna thank my wife, Gloria, and our children, Tom and Elizabeth, for their continuing support of all my work. Being a lawyer is the best professional decision I ever made. From the time I started Georgetown University Law Center to today, there is nothing I would rather be than a lawyer. On the Cook County Board, I have become an advocate for the court system, state's attorney's office, and the sheriff's office. Since 1981, I've had the great privilege to be the legislative counsel of the CPA. I've served every president from Jack Hayes to Lynn Grayson. Wow, 40 years. In this role, I have been involved in advocating the CBA positions on hundreds of bills. I'm grateful to have the backing of the many CBA committees and Terry Murphy and Beth McNean as we have tackled these complex issues. Like Justice Stevens did in his retirement from the court, I hope after retiring from the county board to continue working on improving the quality of life in our community. Thank you again for this award. Thank you again to President Abbott and to the joint CBA-CBF Selection Committee for choosing such distinguished honorees for the 2021 Justice John Paul Stevens Awards. Most importantly, I want to thank our extraordinary honorees for their tremendous contributions to our legal profession in our community. A special thank you to CBA Executive Director Beth McMean and Media Director Ricardo Iceless for their diligent work in putting this program together. And thanks again to all of you for joining us today for this special program. Have a wonderful afternoon.